I got pregnant during the pandemic. That was already um, strike one against me. Um, <laughs> Um, right, two, at, at least you had a fruitful pandemic. This is the plaintiff, Lord S. Loridan. She says she hired the defendant to assist in the birth of her baby and to preserve and save her placenta. The woman botched the job. Her placenta wasn't saved. And she's here suing for a full refund of the $1,800 she paid the woman. This is the defendant, Nubia Jones. She says the plaintiff's birth progressed extremely quickly. And when she got to the hospital, she was denied entry because she didn't have a negative COVID test in hand. The plaintiff failed to communicate she needed to be tested. She assisted in her birth in many other ways and does not owe a refund. She's accused of being too late. All parties, please raise your right hands. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Millian is up presiding. Boy, that's a lot of stuff. To I know. <laughs> Let it Try get reading it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Ms. Laura Den, you are suing Nubia Jones and Dula Viva Birth LLC, her company, for $1,800 that you paid her to be your doula during the birth of your first child, of your child. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And uh, things didn't exactly go according to schedule. Tell me what happened here, Ms. Laura Den. So from the beginning, um, I, you know, I got pregnant during the pandemic. That was already um, strike one against me. Um, <laughs> um, I two, know, at, at least you had a fruitful pandemic, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> two, I'm over the age of 35, so I'm considered high risk. Mm -hmm. um, three, um, because I'm African American, it's known that um, you know when it comes to maternity care, African American women or just um, minorities in general, the care that they receive um, isn't really the best. So the statistics show that when um, there is a doula present, they have a high, the ch child has a better chance at survival. What is so a doula? Things, Why don't you explain to to everyone what a doula is, Ms. Jones? Um, a doula is a Parent, uh, independent perinatal uh, professional. And basically what we do is we uh, support mothers and all birthing people um, at different stages of their um, motherhood. It's, it's the beginning. Sometimes it starts before a mom is actually pregnant during the conception and fertility phase. And then there is the pregnancy, there's the birth, and there's also postpartum, which um, technically is three months after you birth a baby, but we know now from new research, it can continue to one year. What qualifies a person to be a doula? Is there a certification or anything? How does that work? Yeah, so there's not um, a requirement to be certified. Um, doulas are non-medical professionals. And although a lot of us are certified, it's not regulated on a higher level. Okay, and how, so how did, when you say a lot of us are certified, who do you get certified by? So there are different uh, doula agencies that okay. exist. I've been a certified doula um, with one major uh, agency for about nine years now. Okay, so how many births have you assisted in? Uh, approximately 250. Okay. And so, I also have five so, of my own. Okay, um, <laughs> so... You, and how did you find out about her services, Ms. Lorden? Google. Okay. Yes. Now, so tell me before, well, you hired her at what stage of your pregnancy? So October, so that is um, second trimester. Okay. Your child was born when? Uh, February. Okay. And between October and February, what contact did you have with her and what services did she provide to you? So um, this uh, contact was all virtual. Um, and the services that she provided me were YouTube videos and articles 
Um, and we had phone calls, phone discussions. Right. And so what did you discuss in the phone discussions? So in the discussions, you know, I, I asked questions um, based off the research that she sent me. I had questions. So I would ask things like, OK, well, the birthing plan where well, here's the birthing plan that I would like to have or, you know, can I do this or, you know, what are your thoughts about that? Um, at one point, I wanted to have the um, baby at a birthing center versus the hospital. So just discussing um, various things. Um, one thing I would like to point out is that a lot of time during our conversations, I made mention to her, um, you know, well, what is this supposed to like I, this? I'm a first time mom. I don't know what to expect. I've never walked this path. I don't really know what to ask or what to look for. You know, guide me. Show yeah, you me. don't know what you um, don't know. No, yeah. Right. Um, and I felt like even in that stage, you know, giving me YouTube articles, that's great. Or YouTube videos or articles, I could, you know, do those things myself, but it doesn't really help me if, unless I have somebody saying, okay, well, this is traditionally what happens. Or this right, is but at any point in time, you don't strike for. me as someone who doesn't know how to pick up the phone and call the doula she paid $1,800 for. Were they ever unavailable for you? Because there's two people in your... No. Right, they were available for any question you had. Anytime yeah. you asked a question, they answered. They mm -hmm. sent you a lot of materials. Yeah, it's virtual, because yes. that's, you know, yes. that that's what mm -hmm. happens when you get pregnant during COVID. It's going to be... A lot <laughs> of this is going to be virtual. But let's talk about what happened. Did your labor uh, occur uh, as scheduled? Like, in other words, was it... Were you nine months pregnant? Or 10, really? Because that's the big lie that everyone tells us, that it's nine mm -hmm. months, it's actually... 10, but, um, it's actually 10. yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So, um, so did, uh, the baby wasn't premature, correct? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. What'd you actually have? Overdue. What? Oh, overdue. Oh, mm -hmm. I have three girls. <laughs> and what'd you name your girl? Uh, heaven. Heaven. Oh, all right. So yeah. now <laughs> you are at your house and it's eight in the morning and what's happening. So it's funny. It started at 6 a.m. And I felt like I had to use the bathroom, but then all of a sudden, the pain in my bladder was sharper, stronger. And I'm like, okay, I think this is it. Um, but, you know, based off of, you know, what the doula was saying, oh, it's your first child, labor usually takes a while. So I'm like, okay, well, let me just, you know, ride the wave. So I'm riding it, but then it's getting stronger and stronger. And then Were that's you timing when I reached it? out to. You know, you're supposed to time it and. Yes, okay. as best as I could. Okay. Um, Were you completely alone when this pain. was happening, or did you have anybody no. with you? Okay. My husband. Was so here. somebody's. The, so your husband's able to. I mean, I know they're truly. Um, <laughs> what's so? <laughs> yes. My husband's watching, so I can't really say they're useless. No. Um, no, but there's someone there to to mm -hmm. look at a stopwatch or watch a clock or do something mm -hmm. to time the duration of the contraction as duration. well as the length in between contractions. All right. So. Mm -hmm. Um, at some point, you call the doula. When do you call the doula? After two hours? At that point, to be honest with you, I don't know the exact math of it because the reality of it is, I mean, just in my, from my experience, they say, oh, yeah, time the contractions. But when that wave of pain hits you, so, oh, let me stop. Press the button. No, I'm not I doing just, No, yeah, I you know. carried a human for 10 months. My husband can, <laughs> can press the button. That's why I asked if you, if you had anybody with you. Because yeah. if it's not a husband, if it's not a boyfriend, if it's not a girlfriend, it's a friend. You got to know somebody in this world. <laughs> and then when you go to the hospital, you want the doula, right? Because you paid $1,800. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you end up going to the hospital, however close the contractions were, at some point you decided I'm going to the hospital. But you didn't go to the hospital at eight. You went to the hospital a little bit after that, right? Or yeah. Right. So on my way to the hospital, I tell the doula that I'm going to go to the hospital. The contractions are close. Right. And then she's asking, okay, well, how close? How close? Like, okay, cl at close. Just like, cl close. Close? We're Too close for my We're comfort. That's what right. Saying. Yeah. Right. So, so you get to the hospital way. and what do they tell you? I get you? to the hospital. Get this. I get to the hospital around like one and they bring me into um, labor and delivery. And I'm like, but wait, slow down. Like I, I just started having contractions. Well, we're just going to check. Take it easy. The resident comes to check me and she says, you're eight centimeters dilated. Right. And I'm like, I'm not ready. It eight's <laughs> too far. She's like, OK. Eight centimeters, this is it. Yeah. And I immediately text the duel and I said, all right, it's eight centimeters. And she's like, okay, great. You know, woohoo, we're on our way. Woohoo. So at that point, um, the doula um, arrives and I hand the phone to my husband at this point because I'm on the table and, you know, they're starting to 
uh, monitor me and prep me. So I give him the phone because the the pain is like uh, it's, it's, the waves are strong. So I can't even talk. I can't text. Um, so she tells him, okay, we're here. He's like, okay, great. We're here. We're in labor and delivery. So I don't know if she went inside or from the outside. I don't know. Cause we never, I never saw her myself physically. Neither did my husband. Um, but she says that she wasn't able to come in because she did not have a COVID test. So a negative um, COVID test negative. that negative. W- was results. obtained within the last 14 days. 14 days. That's yep. what the hospital was requiring. Yep. Right. And um, the doula was made aware during my pregnancy which hospital I would be delivering at. Um, The doula was also made aware that a negative COVID test would have to be um, provided as well. How was Um, a doula? Wait, I want to ask you how you know the last thing you just said, that the doula was made aware. Who spoke this? I told her. We had the conversation. Who did you speak to? Because there's two people I see involved in the text. There's Jewel and Nubia. Yes. So... Jewel. So Jewel and that's the person the who was who went to the hospital. To be. Yes. So let me talk she to knows. you, M- Ms. Jones. No one knows when she's going to go into labor and which of the two of you, you or, or, or Jewel, would have to be there. So both of you would need to have a negative test. So why didn't you have a negative test? Well, according um, to that scenario, we would have to be walking around with a a, a negative COVID test, but we were never informed of this. And we go to births multiple times a month between New Jersey and New York. And we go to multiple hospitals, multiple birthing locations, and we never have to have a test walking in. Okay. So let's assume for a moment that she didn't tell you. She testifies differently. She says she told the other person who works with you. But I want you to assume for the purposes of our argument that no one told you anything. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Everyone knows that no one can have anybody go to the hospital with them. It's tragic, especially in the pediatric circumstances and especially in the obstetric circumstance. But it's tragic in every circumstance. So you know that it's a hospital setting. And I'm having a hard time understanding how any hospital is going to let you just walk in. You have the absolute right to be there. As First of all, the hospitals have rules about how many people can be in the room now. She gets to pick one person to be in the room. And New Jersey law says you don't count as the one person. So she also gets to have you in the room. So what happened when you or Jewel contacted the hospital to find out what their rules were? Well, we don't call all all of the hospitals. Well, maybe you should just call the hospitals. The hospitals where a person has paid you $1,800 and has told you that's the hospital I'm having my baby at. Maybe just those hospitals you need to call because there were going to be rules. And it is not unreasonable for the hospital to say we need to know that you have had that you're not going to give COVID to all of our nurses and a baby and our mother. We need to know. So Frankly, I'm kind of surprised that this isn't something you guys would take upon yourselves. Well, we're on call 24-7, and um, because we go to different hospitals and they can change their rules at any time, we walk around with our we walk around with the, our doula certifications because that's what the hospitals have been asking no, for. No, darling, There's, darling, that just makes you a doula. Hospitals- it doesn't make you COVID-free. If this is a job you choose to do, then you should be getting tested every 15 days, basically, or every 14 days to be more accurate. Because if you have 100 clients, anybody could be in labor at any, well, not even. You would have to have thousands of clients for anybody to be in labor at any moment. If you had, how many clients do you have at any given time? Approximately four every month, but it four changes. Four every month, that's fine. Time. So yes. four every month, that, that sounds reasonable. So four every month. So you know that this woman is due any second now. In fact, she's overdue. So that means there's four hospitals you gotta call. And maybe some of them are having the baby at the same hospital. So, but you, at most, you would have, stop talking over me. You would have to call four hospitals and find out what the rules are. I would be very surprised if every hospital didn't have the same darn rule. But let's just talk about this circumstance. You know where, it wasn't a big secret where she was having the baby. So, you know, you may be looking at me and saying, well, judge, honestly, this was so weird that we know, but why would it not be your job to find out what this hospital requires? It is your job. You're the doula. I have another reason why. Because in our circle, there's been a lot of discrepancies. Depending on who answers the phone, will tell you the wrong thing. We've had doulas show up. Oh, you just go online. You're right. Don't even. Don't even. Don't even call.
it seems to me, Ms. Jones, that it is exactly your business to know what the hospital rules are. And when your employee got there, your employee was turned away saying, they said to her, where's your test? Why didn't, I guess, you know, there are places where, how long, I guess you had that baby really quickly after you got to the hospital. How long were you in the hospital, Ms. Loridan? So I had her at 542 in the evening. Yeah, that's so. four hours after you got there on your first baby. That is that is really <laughs> fast. I'm sure you've learned since then. Um, but, yeah. you know, four hours is plenty of time to turn around, go get a negative test and come back. Why didn't your is it your employee or your business partner? Um, she's an independent contractor. OK, so, so why she, didn't that um, independent contractor do that? Why didn't she halt, you know, booty to the first place she could get a negative test, you know, one of the, the spot tests, and then take it back there. She had four hours to do that. I could do that. Why couldn't she do that? Yeah, we actually considered it, and, and we back each other up, so I also could have gone to get the test. But um, the last time we did go get um, COVID tests, because we do get them occasionally, we just don't have, like, a schedule, um, it took a long time for us to find a place that would allow us to walk in. Maybe you should um, know that beforehand. Because if you had picked well, up the phone happened, and called the I hospital, do. you would know what the hospital was requiring. And then you would well, then you would research me. beforehand to know, look, under, under no circumstances can you keep $1,800 when you guys weren't there for the birth. You understand that, right? Particularly when well, the reason like that you're not there for the birth is because you didn't have what the hospital required for you to be there for the birth. Fine. So you I argued to me, you wanted to say something and I stopped you from mind. talking. And so you were, you wanted to argue to me why it is that you shouldn't have to return any money. Go ahead. So number one, we don't, we never know how long a mom is going to be in labor. We never know. So because of our experience in finding a location in the moment, it's not about, I know where the locations are. It's just that you can't always walk into them. And if you walk in, there's usually a long line. At this time, we were still dealing with this. So we can't guarantee that we'll be back by a certain time. And so our offer in that moment to her was, since you're about to have your baby, let's say we did go get a COVID test. Maybe we would have gotten back in time to give her two hours of support. I, what I was saying to her, since she did such an amazing job and her birth was going so beautiful and she was almost done with this, that we could, in exchange, give her more support. That's which very Which would nice. be 12 hours. I am having a baby in four hours. hours. I paid somebody $1,800 to help me have my baby. And you're going to tell me, yeah, I don't think it's worth us trying to find a negative test and being there with you at the precise moment that you're birthing. Yeah, what? Well, we'll give you, we'll throw in some extras later. Then you offer her $500 of a discount and you say that's not enough. And what do you think is enough, Ms. Loridan? What do you think is appropriate? All things being fair, they did provide service in the beginning. Um, they did. Um, they were available for phone conversations. Um, I guess that Maybe worth mm, two, three hundred. <laughs> I am going to order you to return twelve hundred of the eighteen hundred dollars to Ms. Loridan. Verdict for the plaintiff, twelve hundred dollars. Thank you. So the plaintiff is going to get $1,200 back. She was asking for $1,800, all of the money, uh, but she doesn't get that. Ms. Jones, uh, the defendant, let me ask you, the judge really thinks you, you're at fault because you didn't get that COVID test. Do you, do you understand that? I understand, but um, that particular hospital definitely has barriers in place to keep mothers from having the extra support that they desire. Other hospitals do not have that policy in place. And so it's really unfortunate that um, Ms. Lourdes um, was a victim of that. You're going to have to give some money back. You OK with that? You understand that? That's the rule, right? Yes, I respect Judge Julian's um, decision. All right. Let's talk to Ms. Lourdes now, the plaintiff in this case. Ma'am, uh, you're going to get some money back. You don't get it all. Number one, how do you feel about that? You OK with that? Um, the verdict, I, I, I'm happy for it. Um, I wish that I had the uh, doula support because um, there were things that I, I wanted that didn't take place. But, you know, it's OK. Um, I gave birth to a healthy baby. So all's well. You know, one of the things one of the things I understand you wanted was to have the placenta saved. Uh, yep. It didn't come up a lot in the case, but uh, that was one thing you were really upset about. Why did you want that? Because I well, what I wanted to do is to take it and plant a tree on top of it to preserve, to grow with my daughter as she grows. But um, that, uh, that experience, uh, we're just never going to have. All right. So. Okay. Thank you so much. Good luck to you. So, Doug, this is going to be our reality for a while. 
Um, when you need to be tested to perform a service, to enter a facility to perform a service, um, if you don't do it properly, that can put you on the hook for legal liability. So this is a new world for us, but COVID testing can be part of a contract. And if you don't meet the requirements, you could end up on the wrong end of a lawsuit. The question is, can I be sued if my husband has a DWI accident? Everything is in my name. Now, I'm presuming when this person asks that question, she's referring to the car right. that was used in the DWI accident. Well, there's a marriage, obviously. It's, she, she's calling him her husband, so there's there's joint property. The pro and... Right. Her real problem is that the car is in her name. If the car wasn't in her name, it wouldn't matter what else was. Exactly. Because... In most every state, the rule is, uh, if not in every state, right. um, the rule is that if you own the car, you also can get sued. Right. Like you are independently right. someone who can be sued, not just the driver, right. but the owner of the car can be sued. Uh, unless somebody stole your car. Unless somebody and, stole right. your car, she's going to have a really hard time saying right, that. Right, absolutely. I mean, this is, this is a situation that illustrates why people get liability insurance on their cars. You got right. to have liability insurance to protect yourself. And if you, if you have more money or more assets that could be exposed to a judgment, you ain't get more insurance. And people end up getting higher insurance liability limits and umbrella policies and who knows what else to protect themselves in case something like this happens. Because obviously car accidents can cause catastrophic injuries and DWI, not a good thing. Also, the cars in a household should just be under one name. Unless there's a reason why, like right. you don't each, trust the person. I mean, you if you're married, four drivers in a household, that's each it. should have each a car, car their should own just have name. one person's name. So there's only one person in your household who can right. be sued. Right. This is the plaintiff, Caroline Taylor. She said she provided internet services to the defendant, and the guy always paid late and then just stopped paying altogether. She canceled his services and is now here suing for the balance of the $2,302.80 she says she's owed. This is the defendant, Charlie. He says he paid the plaintiff in full. And when she wanted him to subscribe for another year, he didn't respond. She sent him a letter saying she was going to stop providing service, which she did. Now she's suing him for additional money? For what? He owes nothing and feels the judge will agree. He's accused of being non-communicative. All parties, please raise your right hands. Thank you, Douglas. All right. Computer Fixer Key West, doing business as IT Key West, uh, represented here by Ms. Taylor, the owner. You are suing the defendant's construction company. Uh, you just want us to call you Charlie, Mr. Charlie, for bills that have not been paid, amounting to $2,302.80 uh, for computer services that you were providing to him. So tell me how your IT company comes to work for his construction company. So um, my husband and I, my business partner and I, run a small IT business in Key West. And about January of uh, 2020, um, we were contacted by the defendant to um, set up their entire office. And uh, basically that means the uh, networking systems, um, all the computer infrastructure, the, services, the server, as well as five workstations. Okay. And, um, and we did so. And, we and you got paid for, for that, time. right? And we did get paid for that. Okay. Um, it was late, um, but we did get paid for it. Um, and then throughout the year, we serviced um, Charlie um, and his company. Um, and they were continually What do you late. mean by serviced? So um, we run their, um, their computer systems, and I'll let my um, business partner talk to you about exactly what that service is. Because okay, well, then I need to talk to your business partner because I'm trying to understand what it is someone buys for $700 a month or what it is he agreed to buy for $700 a month. Right. I'm, I'm kind of right. wondering what you guys do. So I'd love right, an explanation right. of that. Do you want, you want to go ahead and let your business partner explain that to me? Yes. Yeah, okay, that sounds go great. ahead, and then you'll come back right after. Hi. Hi, I'm Keith McDonald. Okay, Mr. McDonald, can you explain to me what, um, it, what service it is that you guys provide to the defendant? 
Go ahead. Basically, the ongoing services subscriptions for ransomware protection, security protection. We also provide 24-7 monitoring of the servers. What does that mean, 24-7 monitoring of the servers? What does that mean? We have an outside service that we use to constantly check on all of the components. And if there's any failure or any problems, we get alerts, we get emails. So we Yeah, but what do you get? You get, an, you get a, you get an email that says the network's not working. So when my network's not working, I unplug it and plug it and or I have uh, Comcast come or whoever your provider is. So I'm, I'm j listen, this is America. Bully for you if you can get $700 out of a company. But, I, you know, I know that one of the things that's listed is Microsoft 365 and a subscription to that and a subscription to ransomware. But that stuff is like, if he knew what he was doing, that's 15 bucks a month for the subscription. That's like kind of not, but he doesn't know what he's doing. And that's what you're selling him, the knowledge, right? Because well, each is, of these things are... This, this is a package that provides complete support, and it's not something that we just did for them. It's something that we do for a lot of people that basically gives you preventative maintenance soup to nuts. It doesn't work for, we don't do it for individuals. We concentrate on businesses because they're the ones who can't have their computers down. But, how, is, but how, would, how does it give you preventative maintenance? How, where's... Basically, you know, every phone, every laptop, every computer constantly has updates. Sometimes it doesn't reboot right. Sometimes it doesn't function right. And also included in that monthly fee is the ability to call us and also are to resolve any One hour of that. It's not unlimited. It's yeah. one hour of, of, of phone service so, or, or of uh, right. service. In fact, the exact example you gave to uh, when you gave your statement was if it's not working because it's not plugged in, we'd go over there and plug it in, which was kind of funny. But I'm trying to understand. We're trying to simplify. I, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to simplify it quite that much for the judge, but I appreciate it. Okay. So what but I guess I'm trying to understand if he was more computer savvy he would just buy Microsoft and buy ransomware and then just pay the licensing fee each year. And we, we used to have clients who did things that way. They would try and buy it themselves. And what happens in the business environment is people don't renew. They end up exposed. They don't renew it. They aren't keeping up with it. So we offer this and it's not required. I don't know how anyone. you can not keep up with it when you get 500 alerts every time you open your eyeballs. That's exactly they, why they tell don't keep you, up with it. They'll tell you, they hey, you got to renew this. Hey, your subscription's almost over. Wait, I'm in month one of 12 months. Why are you telling <laughs> me the subscription's over? I once had like three subscriptions to a magazine at the same time because I wasn't <laughs> sure when they were. They're like, it's almost over and I'm writing another You're check right. and then, you know. Um, well, we keep right. track of all of that and we provide all of that. We make sure that everything is always up and running. And really a lot of this that has evolved has been because of security breaches, because people haven't maintained their ransomware. They don't maintain their updates. And then when they end up getting all their data stolen, they turn to us and say, why did it happen? And we look and we say, well, you haven't kept up with any of your security. That's why you got attacked by ransomware. You never knew your backups weren't happening because you weren't checking them. We verify the backups happen every single night on the right. servers and the workstations. So we know that we can recover if there's anything that happens. Mr. Charlie, according to them, you owe them three months, November, December, and January of the bill for $767.60 that they were charging you per month. What is your reason for not paying them? Well, <clears throat> the uh, the uh, we received a, an email in October, uh, middle of October, and the email in part states that uh, unless we contacted them, they were going to uh, remove all the support services and software. Right. What, and that, it says that in part. And what does it say in the part right above it, the line right above it? Yeah, it says uh, if July and August are not paid, we'll have to discontinue remote and on-site technical services. Both. Did you pay July we and paid. August? Absolutely. Right. After you got this letter, you paid July and August. Um, yeah. Did you ever tell them you're fired? No. So you were still using their services, but you weren't paying for it because you, you also didn't pay November, Jan December, and January. You were behind on that. So why shouldn't I make you pay them today? What is it that you're dissatisfied with? What is it that you've learned well, since then? Why do you feel like it's unfair? Give me your defense. Number one. They didn't do anything. I mean, it sat there. 
Uh, they detailed out a, a number of emails that they sent. And what I'm saying, I had no contract with them. No, you're and right. You could cancel at any time. That just means right. you got to cancel. Not, you know, but well, you got to cancel if you want to cancel. Right. Well, I, did, I, didn't, I didn't see that I needed to cancel. All I saw, all I, when I read this, all I needed to tell them was I was going to continue. I didn't have to tell them, in my opinion, yes. It, am I not being courteous? Yes. Okay. But I didn't need to tell them that uh, I was canceling the service. Why not? I got another I got another. Why not? Tell me again and- why, why you wouldn't need to tell them. Because this stuff happens remotely. So if they don't need to monitor anything, they need to do so. How do you physically, when someone, Mr. Um, McDonald, when someone says you're fired how what do what do you physically do we don't have to do anything on site we can remove all of our support software and all the subscriptions remotely but the email but something that happens something you have yeah, to do yeah. something yeah because otherwise you're paying for it every service. month and you're still yes, monitoring it so yeah. you know the email well, that they, he they, has they, referenced the email that you're referencing here's what the email says your July and August invoices are still unpaid, and we are about to send out the invoice for September. It is rare to have clients this far behind in payments, and we do not automatically charge late fees. If July and August are not paid, we will have to discontinue remote on-site technical support on Friday, October 16. Please let us know if you would like to continue with our services. Otherwise, on October 31st, we will remove all other support software, monitoring backups, virus malware, ransomware protection. This is Key West, right? This is a small community. People on the island know each other. A lot of their letters and emails to you saying, why is it so hard for you to answer my phone calls or my texts or my emails? All you had to do was tell them, hey, I don't want to continue. And... But what you did was pay July and August. So I don't think you did discontinue them. You claim that you hired someone new. When did you hire the new someone? It was in in, in December, Your Honor. Right. So do you have proof of that, by the way, that you hired somebody in December? Cancel check, probably. But you don't have it with you right now to show it to me, right? I do not. Okay. Well, November, you still were using him because that's one of the bills they're suing for. Um, And if you hired somebody in December... It would have been awesome if you had just told them to stop monitoring you, but you never did. I don't see this the way you see it. I don't see it as, oh, I'm supposed to tell them if I do want to keep them. No. Well, it says, let us know this? if you want to continue with our services. Otherwise, we'll remove it. And the sentence above, if July and August are not paid. But you do pay July and August after this. How are they supposed to glean from that that you'd like them to stop monitoring? It's one sentence you have to tell them. It's if two, I have, if, it's two, Yeah, go ahead. It's, their email is two sentences, Your Honor. The, and, and the comma after services, otherwise on October 33rd, we will remove all of its stuff. On October 31st, he was going to remove all the stuff. Then why did you He told me. He, he fired me. If you think that's true, which I don't think you do, okay? Absolutely. Yeah, you don't. You and I are both smiling at you right now. <laughs> you know that's not true because you didn't even hire anybody until December at best, and you don't have proof that you hired somebody in December. So here's the bottom line. If I have a monthly service, I need to cancel it if I don't want to pay next month. That's all you had to do. And when you send July and August, and you, all you had to do was take a piece of paper, a crayon, and a roll of toilet paper and write, we don't want your services anymore, and stick it in the check. But you didn't because you did want their services, and then you used it November, December, and January. And then you didn't pay them. And I can't, I can't tolerate that, you see, because even though I think that, you know, you may say, well, they weren't doing, oh, by the way, why do you say that? Your new IT guy charges you what? Well, he just tell, he charges us a, a yearly lump sum. How much? Uh, Three thousand. Yeah, that's a lot less. Um, so you're paying less now with the new people, and according to you, you feel like their their job. I'm already finding that you didn't cancel them, and that paying July and August. If you want to cancel somebody, you be clear about it, because paying July and August and saying nothing is not clear about it. So, and that you know. You didn't even, 
at best, you didn't even hire it, so you would have been completely exposed for a month. I'm not buying it. You're just trying to hang your 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 defense on a comma, uh, and I'm not going to let you do it. It's okay. So I am going to order you to pay the three months that are outstanding. I'm ruling in favor of IT Key West and ordering you to pay the two thousand three hundred and two dollars and eighty cents. Good luck, folks. Well, after a fascinating discussion from the judge, she finds for the plaintiff, and the plaintiff will get everything she sought, the $2,302. Uh, Charlie, let me ask you how you feel about this now. She kind of shot down your argument. Well, uh, she did. but I mean, she had good points, but uh, at, the, at the end of the day, they fired me, and, she, and the judge glossed over that. You didn't fire them. That's your problem. You should have fired yeah. them. Then you... And you wouldn't have to pay, <laughs> but you do have to pay now. So yeah, that's right. Anyway, Thank it's you. been nice hearing your your version of it. All right, sorry you lost, but that's it. Okay, Ms. Taylor, how do you guys feel about this now? You're victorious. Um, well, we're victorious. Um, it's a shame because it's a small island, and um, they're 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 new to town. Um, so maybe they don't know how the island works, but we have to take care of each other on this island. It's a small island. We've had never had problem with any clients. We've always had communication. So it's a shame, but I'm glad that the judge ruled in our favor. Very interesting cases. Thank you very much, and congratulations, Ms. Taylor, and your firm. Doug, there is a, an issue in the law. Does silence equal acceptance? And that has been uh, the subject of so much litigation over the years. When somebody sends you something saying that you have an obligation to do something, you should respond to that email. It is important to respond because in fact, silence can equal acceptance. If a litigant admits to breaking the law in a civil court, can the judge forward the information to the district attorney for criminal prosecution? Absolutely. Um, and in some cases, you may be obligated to do that, depending on what it is that a judge heard. Right. Um, has that ever happened before you when you were on the bench? It has. It hasn't. Um, so but uh, it does it happen a lot? No, it doesn't, because most people don't admit to criminal conduct in a civil right. case. Right. Right. Has Although, it ever happened to you? Uh, it absolutely has. But judges, as you say, are I mean, we're obligated where there are bar violations or misconduct by attorneys. We have to report it. Um, and if we have to do that, imagine if, well, if, if, if you have evidence of a crime or someone coming in actually admitting to a crime, you're darn well obligated to also just report that. You're, you're not forfeiting your identity as a neutral arbiter of facts in cases simply because you report someone admitting to violating the law on, in a serious matter. Well, and, I, and also the judge could wait to report it until after the right. civil case is over because in days it'll be over. Right. It, I think they would in almost all circumstances unless yeah. it was some kind of urgent matter. Unless it was something that just wasn't that important, you know, right. that was really minor. Right. Uh, in which case the litigant, the, the, the person who's offended by it can report it always. It doesn't right. have to be the judge. Right. But certainly also when you were a criminal court judge, weren't, you, weren't there situations where someone would come in, they were charged with crime A, and they would kind of admit to crime B, which, which was, was less you know, than aggravated crime mattress a. tag tearing right. or something. You know, <laughs> just something to fade the heat away from that and say, I might have committed a crime, just not this crime. Yeah. A and perhaps that is how it turned out. I don't know. That's going to do it for this session of the People's Court. We'll see you next time.